This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. Years ago, Mount Sinai pioneers Jim and Penny Caldwell risked their lives to cross the uninhabited Saudi desert just to get a glimpse of the mountain of God. Well, today, Dr. Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire report that their recent trip will be known as the last such expedition because of a phenomenon never seen in the history of the world. Because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Hey, Shabbat Shalom Torah fans. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. <clears throat> oh, you are in for a treat tonight. Miles Jones is back with his good friend and producer, Patrick McGuire. And tonight, you are going to see something never seen in the history of the world. These guys went back to Sinai and they have some crazy stories to tell, miraculous stories, in fact. So stay tuned for episode one of our four-part series, Miracles at Sinai. And it would have been a miracle if the barley was a V of this week, but guess what? It wasn't. <laughs> so that means we are now into a 13th month, also known as Darbet on the astronomically and agriculturally corrected <laughs> biblical Hebrew calendar. And with that said, we could talk about having Passover in April. So please welcome my co-host, Michael Rood. Well, welcome, sir. Thank you, Scott. It's good to be here. It kind of was a, a slim chance to none that uh, barley was going to be of even in yes. March. Yes, but we're going to do a new movie. It's called The Eleven Commandments. Oh, really? What's the Eleventh Commandment? The Eleventh Commandment is, Thou shalt keep a feast to me three times a year. And Passover is the one that, that starts it all out. That's right. And so we're going to have a great time with the love of the commandment. Okay, and that is April 26 to 28. You see it there on the bottom of your screen. Uh, if there's still tickets available, you can get tickets available. Go on that website, see if everything's still available. If not, I mean, it was it was getting pretty tight there, so if nothing's available, you can still watch it online. And Michael, you're gonna be here, which is oh, great. Oh yes, I wouldn't miss it. Okay, good. Well, I, you know, people yeah. would be pretty concerned. Yeah, if you I, I would be breaking the commandments. Yeah, that's right. That if would not I be what we do here. That's right. <laughs> Now, uh, speaking of something else special that we're doing, uh, we w we were clearing out part of the office. We're kind of consolidating some things, and guess what we found? We this is literally oh, how it happened. Wow, the original elephant ear. Elephant ear, yes. Yeah, it's made of elephant ears. <laughs> <laughs> the front cover is of uh, one ear, and the back cover is another. You don't say. It takes a whole elephant to make this. Wow, don't tell PETA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's yes, leather rat, it's okay? It's leather rat. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> we found two boxes of these, and these are the first edition chronological gospels that is the leather rat version that was really rare to begin with, and we found two boxes. Yeah, of this was, was made in South, South Africa. Yeah, this really was made in South Africa, and it took us forever to get them, as I recall. Yeah, they had to be shipped by uh, by boat. Yeah, from South Africa, and it took a long time. To, I remember that was back in 2013. I think we did those. It was it a long was time ancient ago. history. It is ancient history. Mm -hmm. So we decided that uh, you know it'd be good for Michael to do, and we didn't ask him. We just kind of mm -hmm. said. We're just gonna get Michael to do this. We asked him to, well, we asked him nicely to, to sign each one of these. So they're, they oh, are now- Oh, thanks, a, Scott. Oh, you just, you didn't know that yet? Oh, well now yeah, you know. Yeah, I know that now. <laughs> <laughs> so each one is signed by Michael Rood. Uh, I think there's only 50 of them, so don't worry, you're not gonna have to work that hard on that. But uh, anyhow, so this is the first edition. So keep in mind that this will not match up with if you have anything that's second edition, like the, uh, the study guide or anything like that. But it's a great keepsake to have. And if you have the first edition study guide, great, yes. It will, it will line right up. None of the, I think one or two of the events change numbers, but it will most, it mostly, uh, most of it lines up with the, uh, yeah, yeah. the the chart too, so. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's just the page numbers change, that's all. But anyway, so that was, uh, that's a beautiful thing. There's on the bottom of your screen how you can get it there. And uh, something else we need to talk about is biblical manhood. Because everyone's forgot what it means to be a man. 
especially according to the Bible. Yeah. And so that's what Bear Independence is talking about. Bear just finished up his series with us last week on Shabbat Night Live. We still have uh, a couple of weeks left of his, um, of his teaching with us. And that is for the love gift. And for a gift of $50 or more, we will give you this teaching. You're not buying the teaching. We're saying thank you for giving us a gift to keep this ministry running. And we are gonna give you that gift. Uh, Michael, something else that's kind of special, this over here, this tumbler. Oh yeah. One of a kind tumbler uh, that was made here for a rude awakening uh, folks. Uh, and it's not gonna be made anytime ever again by, you know, for anyone else with this design. So this is the only time you can get it. Uh, and because of that exclusivity, they oh, may it's, run out. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It says, be still and know that I am Yehovah. And it's peppered with verses all over here. Like I will give you rest, Matthew 1, 28. Uh, Taste and see that Yehovah is good. Pray about everything, Philippians 4, 6. So all these type of verses are on here. And uh, speaking of praying, it also comes with a prayer journal. So this is a be still and know prayer journal that also comes with uh, this. And this is your gift for $100 or more. And for $300 or more, we have actually something over here with 14 karat gold on it. Yeah, this, Ramon. Yes. It's, it's a pomegranate. It's a pomegranate. And a very popular. Did you have any pomegranate trees when you lived in Israel? Yes, I did. You did? Okay. Yeah, the flower on the bottom is a Star of David. Okay, oh yeah, because it just kind of grows that way, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it grows that way. Okay, is that where they got it from? The idea? I, yes, I really? think so. Because of the Hebrew word for it is Ramon. And remember, uh, the, uh, Na Naaman the leper, he, he, he said, forgive me if I I go in with my my master and bow in front of Ramon. And uh, the prophet said, go your way in peace. God knows your heart. Mm, okay, and that's what that's a, that involved the pomegranate. Yeah, Ramon, yeah, huh. pomegranate. Interesting, wow. So th they grow just as common as, a, as an apple tree in the U.S.? Oh yeah, it's even more. Wow. I love pomegranates, but they're so rare to find. They don't yeah, around Yeah, we, we had a couple in the backyard. Mm, wow. They're very tasty. Yeah, <laughs> I love pomegranates. How, how to cut them is always a trick, but <laughs> wouldn't have to cut this one. The, the gold accents on here are actually, yeah, it's, it's 24 karat gold on here. So it's a beautiful thing to have. And again, this is our oh, way of saying thank oh, you. Oh, this is a this tile. Way. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a, it's a tile. You can hang it up. I suppose you could even put it in the wall with other tiles if yeah, you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a certificate of authenticity on the back. Uh, it was made by Israeli uh, artists. Oh, yeah. So hand painted. Oh, that's really something. It's a beautiful thing, yep. Yeah. All right, so tonight we have another beautiful thing. First episode of our new series, Miracles at Sinai, with uh, Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire. Take a look. This was the last expedition across the desert to Sinai. Yeah, uh, now tell me why, we, why you say that. Well, they built a road, and while we were there, <laughs> we, <laughs> we came in across the desert in our Land Rovers, which was a bumpy ride, but we went all around the region, you know, in crossing the desert. But while we were there at Sinai during that period, they built a road in there, wow. which you could see in the, in the film. They're building. So they're even in they're this setting up for, they're setting up for tourism. They'll wow. have hotels there, everyone can come. And th this is prophetic. You know, it says in Isaiah 1 and Micah, it says that all in the in the end days, all nations will come up to Har Yehovah. That's the mountain mm. of God in Hebrew. They will all come up to Har Yehovah. And then that will set off a new series of events. All right, well, there you have it. Years ago, Mount Sinai pioneers Jim and Penny Caldwell risked their lives across the uninhabited Saudi desert yeah. just to get a glimpse of the mountain of God. Well, today, Dr. Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire report that their recent trip will be known as the last such expedition. We'll tell you why next, but first, you need to see this. What does it mean to be a man? Is it what the world says? If that's true, why are there so many broken lives, broken homes, and broken spirits when men do things the world's way? So many men will say yes when it's convenient, and then when it's time to cash in that yes, oh, it's too difficult, my wife's unhappy, I got a thing going on. No, you said you would be there. In this month's Love Gift Teaching, Biblical Manhood, Survivalist teacher, firearms expert, emergency response instructor, entrepreneur, and servant of the Most High, Bear Independent, 
reestablishes the simple biblical model of what Yehovah expects of men in every aspect of their lives. This teaching is not available anywhere online, but we'll give it to you as our thanks for supporting A Rude Awakening International. When you donate $50 as a love gift to this ministry in March, we'll send you Biblical Manhood with Bear Independent on DVD or Blu-ray. Donate $100 and we'll send you Biblical Manhood plus a 40-ounce stainless steel insulated tumbler with encouraging verses from the Bible plus a matching prayer journal. Donate $300 and we'll send you Biblical Manhood, the matching stainless steel tumbler and prayer journal, and a limited edition clay plaque hand-painted in Israel featuring pomegranate artwork and 24 karat gold accents. These gifts are a limited time offer from Michael Rood to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. Thank you. Your donations ensure that important teachings like biblical manhood keep coming from A Rude Awakening International. Use your smartphone to scan the QR code on your screen to donate now and receive these limited time gifts. Or call 888-766-3610 or get your gifts online with a donation at monthlylovegift.com. For the past 20 years, I've lived in the land of Israel. And I've had many occasions to eat in the home of Orthodox Jews and on Shabbat, as the two hollow loaves were brought out representing the double portion of manna that fell from heaven and that we would not need to be collecting manna the next day, but his provision is there for us. And as they said the blessing, Baruch Katah, Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, homotzi lechem min haaretz. I, of course, know the uh, Adonai is really Yehovah. I know that. And then as they took the cup and said, Baruch atah Yehovah, Ele, uh, uh, Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, barei pari hagafen, I would sit at that table and I would recognize and understand that what they are doing, this is what was done from the time that the Melech Zadik brought forth bread and wine to Abraham. And Yeshua said, this represents my body, which is broken for you. This cup represents the renewed covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, wherever you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. The remembrance of them are all around. And this is what the Almighty put in place for us to understand. And this is why Yeshua said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. We do this in remembrance of him. Shabbat Shalom. So we all know that 3,000 plus years ago, there were some miracles at Mount Sinai. That's pretty obvious. We read about them in the Bible. But there were also some modern miracles at Sinai, and we have two fellows here that are going to tell us about that today, Dr. Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live. Thank you, thank you. Very excited to be here. It's Great to be been here. since Passover special. Yeah. We had just gotten back from our expedition to Mount Sinai. Now we have some new stuff to share with the audience that didn't get to see the Passover special. Okay. That plus more, so. All right, well, we'll get the video in just a sec, but Miles, you've been here before, our audience knows you, but Patrick, you are new to our audience. Uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Where are you from, what do you do? Well, I'm a, I'm a TV producer. Uh, I was the crew, we put together a crew to go to Mount Sinai, which I did not want to miss, and having seen all the stuff on Shabbat Night Live, as well, uh, definitely wanted to be part of that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, then when the opportunity came, it was like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, but my background is uh, I 
been in TV news. Uh, don't hold it against me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was back in the day when we actually did journalism, and, uh, uh, and then I've had my own production company, and I've uh, been working with ministries. Uh, really for the last 25 years. And you were just telling me before the cameras came on that uh, you have followed Michael Rude and Shabbat Night Live for a long time. You oh, guys yeah. have been part of an Aviv <laughs> Fellowship or started yes. an Aviv Fellowship yeah. or something to no. that effect. Yeah. Now, that we're, now that we're in Austin, uh, I asked, is there an Aviv Fellowship in Austin? And of course there's not, so now there's pressure <laughs> 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 to start one. But yeah, uh, it's, it's really amazing. And uh, as we begin to really get into our Hebrew roots. Uh, uh, I was working with a company in Israel uh, that was a high-tech company, uh, and they actually do the, high, the tech for the Bible Museum today. Mm. Uh, and uh, we were working on a project back in 2009 and 10, uh, so that kind of really pushed me back to the Hebrew roots because we'd be I was the token Christian on the group. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were developing a program for children. Um, and so uh, a computer program, a full virtual world, which back then was a big deal. And um, so I had to really connect uh, with the Hebrew roots and started calling on my messianic friends and whatnot. I said, what are we talking about? How can I, <laughs> how can I really truly be a witness? And um, so... That pushed me in oh, full time. Yeah. And that's how you ended up with us. We wanted to do messianic programming. Because yeah. We were glad to have a two-time Emmy winner. And he Oh, you never mentioned that, Patrick. Come on. <laughs> no, <laughs> nominated eight times. Wow. But, I got robbed on six of them. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But he went and he, it's fixed. he yeah. governed the, the crew for us, ran the crew for us, which is great because we are going to talk about miracles at Sinai. Yes. And we had a film crew there. We got it on record. So why don't we show it? Okay, very good. Let's take a look. We're here at the base of the mountain in the Jabal Laws Range with two major peaks right beside it. But here we have everything that is stated in scripture is at the altar that Moses and the Israelites built. The columns that were dedicated to the 12 tribes of Israel and the holding pins where they took the animals to be slaughtered. All this we find at the base of this mountain in Midian where scripture says Mount Sinai is located. This is the third day of our expedition at Mount Sinai. Yesterday, my beloved Catherine and I decided to marry at Moses' altar. We spent half the night getting ready. Be ready the third day. Yehovah will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Yehovah called Moses and all the elders up to the mountain, right up there, and speaks to Moses and relays his covenant and his rulings Moses then comes down and repeats them to all the people. All the people answered with one voice, we will obey every word. We will obey every word. They did this under the cloud and lightning and thunder and shofar blasts, which was the hoopah covering for the bride and the groom. From this point forward, you're known as Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. The covenant ceremony at Mount Sinai had not been renewed for 3,500 years. Almost immediately following the ceremony, a great wind arose and rapidly blew in the storm clouds. There was thundering and lightning that covered the mountain of God. The heavens opened and a torrential rain fell from the skies. Eventually, the rain turned to hail, and even later, it turned to snow. The events of Sinai are an act of God that has continued to affect the entire region. Three weeks before the events at Sinai, rivers sprang forth in the desert. 
On March 14, 2023, on the same day as the events of Sinai, the south of Arabia was flooded. In the days following the events at Sinai, snow, ice, and flooding occurred widely in Saudi Arabia, Oman, and the Negev Desert of Israel. In Isaiah 43:19, Yehovah said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Could this be the prophecy of Isaiah 43:19 come to pass? Okay, so Patrick, <laughs> now <laughs> you're a movie producer, television producer. That, I mean, you didn't have to add much to this, right? I mean, that, the lightning in the sky, but those clouds that came in, that was real. Yeah. The clouds were real. Uh, the thunder uh, was real. We picked up some of it. The lightning was real. And the lightning was definitely So there real. was some lightning there. There the was definitely wind. lightning. Uh, we en <laughs> I enhanced it a little bit so you could see it. But other than that, uh, yeah, that was, that was it. It was and, all there. And both sides <laughs> of the mountain. So there was a team at uh, the Split Rock, which is on the, on the west side of the mountain. Uh, and it was coming down there as well. They had to quickly get out of there. And, and uh, there was thunder and lightning and all that happening there as well. So it was the whole mountain was, was engaged. And this was what, how long after that? Nice, beautiful wedding where everyone was getting sunburned. It's like 30 <laughs> minutes. We had time to, it took wow. us 20 minutes to walk down to where our Land Rovers were. And we were having our wedding reception <laughs> in paper plates. And we had to scramble for the Land Rovers Right in the middle of that, because it was coming in fast. It was impressive. Goodness. Now, you had told me uh, when we were planning this, you said that the locals are very happy about this. Sure. So uh, tell, tell me about that whole experience. Well, it's it's water. The, the grass will grow throughout the desert. I mean, the seeds are there. It'll grow. It'll feed their crops for all year. They'll be, they'll be eating that grass. Normally, there's nothing there. <laughs> I mean, nothing. So they were ecstatic. This makes Did they tell year. you like how long it had been since something like that? Never mind rain, but like hail and snow? Right. Well, they didn't tell us, but it rains there maybe twice a year. And mm. we're talking, we're not talking torrential rain. We're talking about very modest. They get about half an inch of rain every uh, 20 years. Wow. <laughs> so, it's dry. so this was ridiculously rare. Yes, it was. So we were dancing with them at the rest areas. All the Arabs were just really excited about this. You said they were they were blaring music out of their Land Rovers or whatever. Well, why don't we show them? We can show them. We have the the slide. We, yeah, let's show okay. them. Show them the, well, let's show them. Start at the first one. All right. Come the slides we're doing. That's beautiful. I love it. And so there's this big celebration on your wedding day. Oh, yeah. So we got a we got a wedding reception in, and we got a dance, the wedding dance <laughs> at, the, at the rest stop with the Arabs. We're, Your first we're, dance, I understand, was not with Catherine, but but Mohammed had grabbed you and, and started dancing first. Yeah. yeah so we well, here's an area, but it's in Arabia. You have to dance with Mohammed first. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the photo here. Now this is you and Catherine, uh, right? Mohammed's in the background there somewhere. So this is at that's the rest him stop. getting out of the car, yeah. Oh gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so we're at the rest so stop. So snow and rain, and so this was just something, like you said on the video, it was truly biblical what happened here. This was crazy, I mean, yeah, to the was. point where, gosh, is this is what Isaiah's talking about? I mean, well, not only that, but it we did this on the third day. Uh, and third day is Tuesday. So, you know, the Shabbat is the seventh day. And they don't name all, except for the Sabbath day. They call the rest of the days of the week one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, yeah, even even today, Yom Roshan, Yom Shri, Yom Shlishi. Right? Yes, so. that's exactly right. So we were, on the third day is Tuesday. You know, you've got Sunday, the first day, Monday, the second day, Tuesday, the third day. We had not planned any of this. We were just walking into it like it had already been set up for us. Huh. We had not planned to marry. We definitely had not planned to marry. We didn't plan it on the third day. Oh, you did not plan to marry? Well, no, we did they were not. engaged. Uh, we were engaged. He was trying to convince her for about a couple of years. And, uh, and, and then... <laughs> it took divine intervention. Divine intervention. <laughs> God spoke to each one of them separately in the hotel. Uh, yeah. She's up in the third floor. Okay. He's on the first floor. 
And uh, she's having a dream where God is asking her, "Will you marry Miles?" And she refuses twice, and then he <laughs> asks her, "Will you trust me?" And she says, "Yes, I will trust you." Meanwhile, I'm on the first floor. I hear her calling my name. Right now, I know it's something supernatural. It wakes me up from a sound sleep, but I get up, get dressed, and go to check on and make sure she's okay. So I'm knocking on her door at five o'clock in the morning, and she opens the door and says. I think I just promised to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> so we planned it out for the the, the last day that we were going to be there. And you I mean, had okay. How many witnesses were at this wedding, unplanned, in the desert at the foot of Mount Sinai? Which, by the way, is the most super cool wedding ever. <laughs> I mean, how many people get married at the foot of Mount Sinai in the last thirty five hundred years? Yeah, none. No, none. But there were probably there were surely people that did get married there. You know, that was before. so awesome. So describe this place where you got married. What's there archaeologically? And then again, how many how many people were there? Well, there were twelve witnesses. Imagine Again, that. we didn't plan that. And we're sitting there, we're at Moses' halter, and there are all the columns to the 12 tribes, which are beautiful marble columns, and they're flat on the top. So everybody was, our 12 witnesses who were sitting around on the, the 12 columns to the 12 tribes. It was that is, epic. It had to be just it was surreal. I mean, The only was. seats it, in the house. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, one, I, I, I don't necessarily like to record weddings. Uh, and <laughs> He doesn't do weddings. <laughs> uh, and, and normally because they're not successful. I mean, it's, you know, it's just, I don't know what it is. But, it's kind uh, of a sacred thing, too, really. So, there were, you know, so we had a day to, to think about it. I mean, it wasn't, you know, we, were, we were, had a quite, a quite a tight schedule. Yeah, yeah. And so we were scheduled to be at the mountain uh, the one last day, just mm -hmm. one more time, get there in the morning. You know, it, it takes three and a half hours to get there mm. uh, as you're, you're all-wheel driving or four-wheel driving for about an hour and a half after you leave the, the road. Well, as you saw in that video, they're starting to make a road uh, because uh, with the Neom project, uh, they're actually planning to put a, uh, a year-round snow ski mountain on a peak yeah. just south of Mount Artificial Sinai. Artificial snow. Artificial snow and Whatever stuff. that is. So they're making, it looks like a, a, a two-lane or four-lane divided highway. Uh, they're wow. Not, they're not playing. Uh, and so... Oh, they're they're going to be coming in. Uh, but uh, we're at, I, I can go to the, the slide here uh, ahead, of where we're at in Moses' altar, which is at the foot of Mount Sinai. Um, and... As you can see right here, this is kind of from the top, uh, looking down, you can see the, uh, the altar there. Um, and then it's just amazing. There's Dr. Jones and Moses' altars. Actually, it's not, it doesn't look like a regular, what you think of, you know, as, as a regular altar. Well, it's for sacrificing animals. Right, and you said there was more than more than one of yeah, the. Yeah, there's three of them. There okay. were three sacrifice places. It'd take you all day if you're sacrificing a lot of animals. So I had to have two teams doing this. That's like why they teams. have the three teams. We we, we see here uh, they the have slide before. There. You got this corral thing, where they're coming in, and then you have the large altar area for, for probably for for the cattle, mm -hmm. and then it's three smaller ones, which would be easily done for the goats and, and mm. lambs and stuff. I find it very curious that there's there's a, a right angle in that because you know several years ago, who was it, Temple Grandin, mm -hmm. had described that that is the best way to corral uh, cattle. Some, for some reason, they get nervous when they see other animals being sacrificed before them. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Yeah. So that's probably why the bend. Exactly. And also yes. the lay of the land there, it's, you know, you've got a stream coming right down. And that stream with the rain was running while we were there, which is amazing. You know, after oh, we wow. left, after we left. So it's almost say, like you've oh, seen. Oh, it's been 100 years since there's been any water in this, in this stream. But no. Then so you get this live replay of, I, of Mount Sinai and the, the Israelites day, while you're there. In Exodus yeah. 19, it's like oh everything, you know, the, the thunder, the lightning, the cloud that covers the mountain, the shofar. Yeah, because those clouds, again, you did not insert those patterns. No. You shot that. You grabbed the camera and said, quick, there's a storm coming. We gotta capture Build this, it. yeah. And then the driver comes to us, drivers come to us and say, the Bedouin drivers, we have to get out of here. 
because that'll turn into mud. We won't be able to get out of here. Uh -huh. And so we're less than five minutes down the road and now we're experiencing puddles, that, I mean, that are throwing mud up over the top of the land cruiser. I mean, that's a suburban basically. Uh, and, and, you know, the wipers wipe, <laughs> open it up and we could see, I mean, it's like, are we gonna get out of here? I mean, it was that kind of thing. So we beat the storm out. And so once we got to the paved uh, area, it was a rest area, uh, and, and all the vehicles then gathered there because we had quite a few, I think we had seven vehicles at that point full of, uh, of our team that, that were still there. Uh, and then that's where the dance happened. But <laughs> as you can see the, uh, in this uh, photo here, you can see the, the troughs there and what I like about this is it shows, because the Bible says that the stones uh, could not be carved in this altar. It had to be plain stones. So they fit the stones together and still some of that is still standing. Uh, and mm -hmm. this was- It's also still standing. This place is so remote, or it was. Go ahead. It's been there for 3,500 years, uh -huh. but it's been protected and uh, the, the, the locals wouldn't let anybody in there and uh, it's way off the road. Uh, but more than that, uh, it's very dry. So everything's preserved. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the artifacts that we're gonna show you in that are just what's on the surface. And that's the way a lot of ancient, uh, been to you know a few museums like this where they show that the ancient peoples from all over the world they would take their dead and bring them to a very dry place, whether it's top of a mountain or whatever, and just let the body dry out. And that was their you know, preservation method, uh, mummification just by dry air, essentially. That works. Yeah. Right? That's probably what they did in the ceremony. It's too, in the cemetery that is there, because it's way too rocky to, uh, you know, to dig. Oh, they put rather, rocks around, probably put rocks on top or right. something like that. But there's some interesting arranged uh, standing stones and things like that in that cemetery. Uh, what was interesting about this that struck me is this is where they were sacrificing before the tabernacle was built and why they were building it. So they, they were using this for about 18 months, this whole space. So this That's is where true. God told them to come back to this mountain uh, and sacrifice. Uh, make a sacrifice, that was kind of a high priority to come back and come back to the backside of that mountain. So they had to go around the mountain. Which is a uh, long way. And and uh, and they did it in a short order, pretty fast. They got there. And once they got there, there's plenty of space in the, in the valley there to camp. And we actually did camp there. And so we have some behind the scenes pictures of that we'll show you later. Wow, that's mm -hmm. special. That is really amazing. This was the last expedition across the desert to Sinai. Yeah, and now tell you why we why you say that. Well, they built a road, and while we were there, <laughs> we, <laughs> we came in the across the desert in our Land Rovers, which was a bumpy ride. But we went all around the region, you know, in crossing the desert. But while we were there at Sinai during that period, they built a road in there, wow. which you could see in the in the film. They're building. So they're even in they're this, setting up for they're setting up for tourism. They'll yeah. have hotels there. Everyone can come, and th this is prophetic. You know, it says in Isaiah one and Micah, it says that all in the in the end days, all nations will come up to Har Yehovah. That's the mountain mm. of God in Hebrew. They will all come up to Har Yehovah, and then that will set off a new series of events. And you know, that sort of gives us some, some comfort that the, the mountain and the area around it will not be disturbed mm -hmm. because Jehovah said in his word, all people will come. Yes, there's yes. a road, but if there's nothing to be seen there, why would people come? So yes. it's, it's gonna be preserved. So they're, they're already coming. Oh, they were already man. coming over there. So it's, it's happening now. That prophecy is happening right now. And we have a behind the scenes stuff. So let's hang on to that. We're gonna come back in just a second. So we have Dr. Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making this possible. Yes, you made this possible. Your donations make this show possible. It's the only way this happens. These guys had to come in from Texas. They had to hop a plane. They had to go in a hotel. You did that. Thank you. That's the only way this happens. And your donations ensure that other people can now see this into the future. So we thank you for donating to Shabbat Night Live, and we're gonna allow you to do that in just a second here. We'll be right back.
Hey, thank you for supporting Shabbat Night Live. Imagine, if you will, 3,000 plus years ago, you are behind the scenes mm. at Mount Sinai. What's going on? What's the story that we don't ever find in the Bible? You know, what, what actually went on there? Well, in modern times, I mean, Dr. Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire, you have been to the foot of Mount Sinai. You have literally camped, as you mentioned in the first segment, yeah. At Mount Sinai. We were camping there. Yeah. Gosh, I kind of imagine camping at Mount Sinai. And then Patrick, you started getting some pictures early in the morning that are just surreal. Well, you know, it's 80, we were there in March. So it's like in the 80s oh. during the day, but at night it, it dropped freezing. down to 35 degrees. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it was interesting. So and you were literally intense. We were intense. It, it was intense. And intense. it was intense. <laughs> yeah. We you had a generator a, going to, to charge the batteries overnight. And you think about it too. So the Israelites, okay, that gives perspective. Yeah. The Israelites were there camping in tents. Yeah. And it was yeah. 80 during the day and 30 at it, night. It's so like it that was, in the desert. Very hot in the yeah. day, but very, very, it can be freezing at night. Right, it doesn't, doesn't hold the heat. It just, it's gone. Yeah, but it's every summer. time you'd get up and you'd go out, you'd have this scene. I mean, there was a beautiful full moon. So you could see oh, wow. the mountain almost, not quite like it was day, but close. But in this one, what time was this taken? This by? was at about uh, before six. And that was a full moon that you're seeing. Wow. And then I turned around and there's the sun coming up over Aaron's altar mm -hmm. or with the, the golden calf altar right, right there. Yes. And so as the sun then burst on there, you can see now we see these shots of the golden mountain mm. because it's, it turns gold in that early morning light. You can see the moon is starting to, to go down and the sun's coming up. And then this is a shot of the tent, the tents that we had. Uh, and, and there was quite a few of them. And you literally had a tent of Benjamin there. Yes, Benjamin <laughs> was there. Because <laughs> you see your son, Benjamin, who's actually in the studio with us today, uh, looking on. And wave, wave at the camera, Ben. <laughs> yeah. He got us our wonderful drone uh, you know, film. It was just fabulous. So the next morning, uh, you know, one of the guys has got, we're getting, they're getting ready to close, climb the mountain. And so we're praying. And so the Bedouins gave us these- Caftans. What do they call it? Caftans. Uh, I had my, I had my uh, puffer uh, jacket with me, but he's in short sleeves. He's ready to climb. So we prayed and then the, uh, part of the group headed to the mountain, mm -hmm. to climb the mountain. And so you see him heading to the mountain there and, and uh, that big boulder in the middle underneath the peak is, does have some serious inscriptions on it, which we will look at here. So now we're getting more in the daytime. And then here's Miles and his at then fiance. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I wanted to point out, now this is shot from uh, Moses, Moses altar. So we're at the base of the mountain, but we look up and you can see the cleft of the rock at the top. Um, is, this a, and, is this a traditional rendering or is there some proof that this is probably where Moses was? In well, the, we assume it is because it, it, it's the place where he saw it. So is there another cleft in the rock in the mountain? I didn't see one, but. Mm. It almost looks like the two Ten Commandment things together. You see a little tree there, yeah, uh, little tree. which is way cool. And then right. below that is uh, Elijah's, uh, Elijah's cave, where also uh, Paul was there. And likely that's where Moses would stay when he was, you know, or not. He could have been anywhere. But Elijah but, stayed there. But Elijah definitely yeah, that stayed one there. Definitely and Paul stayed there. And that there. was an incredible scene in the Bible. If you haven't read it, go back and read it. The encounter that he had with Yehovah yeah. on the mountain mm. while he was staying in that cave. And, that and then little, we have another shot, a couple another shots in the cave. That there. little tree at the top, uh, might that have been a bush? <laughs> it, it wasn't burning. Ooh, at the time. It wasn't burning this time. But it burns without being consumed. Well, it's likely because he came to that side of the mountain, which is the east side of the mountain, to where the bush was. Who knows that maybe Moses' altar was right there near the bush. Can you imagine if there's been be. foliage there like for 3,000 years just growing there? Or maybe that, you know, like there, it's there are weird some. to think about. I never thought about that. But, you know, Jehovah spoke from the mountain to the entire assembly of people. He could have spoken to Moses in the same way he's standing out there where the altar would be yeah. and seeing that burning bush up there. And that's not that whole behind the scenes thing, right? You have a new perspective mm -hmm. when you're actually there that, oh, maybe this is the way it yeah, happened because now that I see it, absolutely, this makes sense and it, that it does. doesn't. And you know, like. Well, Moses, for instance, when he's coming down and, and they're, they're worshiping at the uh, Aaron's altar or the, the golden calf altar, 
Well, here we are at the cave. This is shot from the mouth of the cave, and I outlined where the where the you can see that uh, rock formation of where Aaron's altar, they call it, uh, the Golden Calf altar is. You can still see this is these are shots from the mouth of Elijah's cave, mm -hmm. and uh, that's Catherine sitting right at the edge of it, mm -hmm. and you can see in the on, behind her is Moses' altar. Uh, right and a dry half. stream from there. And then, uh, let me see, we go down one more. You can see uh, then from the at that edge shooting down, you can see Moses' altar there. Okay, so from Moses' altar, we can see Elijah's cave in the cleft of the rock. We cannot see because that little foothill uh, 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 obscures the mountain because we're that close. Ah. And keep in mind, that's like a four-hour climb from Moses' wow. altar up to where... This picture is taken. Well, we've it's seen very another, steep. We've it's seen in other photos steep. too that those rocks, they don't look that big, but when you had people there, it's almost like, <laughs> did you put those people in Photoshop or something? Yeah, because they look really there. tiny. So it, yeah, this is a lot bigger place than it looks. Yeah. So the Elder's Plateau, you cannot see from the from the from uh, Moses' altar. But when you get up there, it's like the size of a football field. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. And that's where the 70 elders yeah. ate and, and did that thing. Uh, and then this picture here. This is Brian Williams, who's one of the new generation of Exodus documenters, doing great job. He's done some wonderful films for us. So you'll see more of him. But he'll never be able to do an expedition across the desert anymore no, because he'll just take the road. Unless it goes guess, today. I you guess know? you could do it. It would just be foolhardy <laughs> when you get on the tourist bus. Yeah, drive drive next the to the road, road, you know, that yeah. type of thing, the back road. But anyway, Brian Williams is still with us and he's doing continuing to do great work. And then we want to credit uh, Keith for yeah, Keith, Keith Johnson, Johnson. Ah. Uh, hiding this shofar <laughs> in, the, in the little rock at the plateau. And so our team all got a chance to blow the sh the shofar. So we're down. Said, we're, we're up on the mountain. Oh, I got to tell Keith Johnson about this. He'll be thrilled. I don't know if he even knows this. Or did you tell him? No. No, we haven't. We're, oh, so yeah. we're shooting at the I'm base. Sure somebody has. We're trying. We're videotaping at the base uh, at Moses' altar, and we hear the shofar sounds <laughs> echoing because it's, you, the acoustics there are amazing. Mm -hmm. So they're echoing it. They're trying to blow the shofar, and Benjamin's blowing it, uh, and, uh, and about four, three or four of them were blowing this, trying to blow the shofar, anyways. And then we hear people chanting the ironic blessing in Hebrew coming down from the mount. Oh my god! Catherine goodness. chanted it. But they're at the Elders Plateau and at the top of the mountain. There are other people that are doing the same thing. That wasn't planned either. They just we happened to have three people up on the mountain that knew the ironic blessing in oh, Hebrew. Wow. It was pretty you amazing. Do you have stuff. Arabic people with you? There were some yeah, the guys were that were there, Arabic. yeah. And they're so sitting there going, "What are you people doing?" And, well, they're <laughs> and, and uh, of course our uh, our tour uh, person. Who puts all that to, all that together? She was quite nervous, you know, and <laughs> mm. and and then the radical, you know, like the ISIS types, they're really worried that anybody's going to be worshiping in there. Uh, uh, so we so had to kind of cool it. Never be another marriage at Mount Sinai. Probably not. So we get to the top, and at the top you have a little marker there, which is way cool, and mm. then. Uh, Benjamin, it's our team, and and uh, uh, Jenny and Jonathan, and then one of the guys. Jonathan, so on this photo right here, so you're showing. Yeah. Now this is the rest of the. You've noted already the rest of the landscape is brown, mm -hmm. right? This is black. And gold. Is it looks like gold. And this is black at the top. Mm -hmm. This is not some shadow people saw on a photo. No. no. Uh -uh. This not is a black rock. What? I mean. And you can flip over those rocks, and it's tan underneath. Come on. It's, Come it's, on. it's pretty crazy. Really? It's a different color underneath. So this is literally something. So there's no other explanation that when God rained down fire with the commandments, mm -hmm. this is it. You're and standing it, where it happened. It's kind of interesting because it's this peak and all around that whole peak. I mean, it's it, there's. I mean, you look at it from satellite. There's a lot of a lot of so mm -hmm. God was intensely there. Like I want people to realize this because we actually have a, a rock from there. Yeah, and and I've had people. We have it in a little glass case, and whenever people come through for a, uh, a tour, I take it out of the glass case and I let them hold it, and I tell them to rub it, and smell the rock. Mm -hmm. You can smell wow. smoke. Wow, that's incredible. I, I mean, it's 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 real. Yes, it is real, and you've got to remember that that Yehovah came to Earth here. That means He created a portal. 
he rendered the space-time continuum to come down from the spiritual plane to the earthly plane. And this is mentioned in Psalm 24. It's all about Har Yehovah, but you don't see that because they mistranslate it. They call it the hill of the Lord. Ah. And so you don't know they're talking about but in, in Hebrew, it's Har Yehovah. And it talks exactly about this. And it calls it an everlasting portal. That means it's still operating today. Mm. So it's an incredible psalm. Go read Psalm 24 if you haven't ever done it. It's speaking exactly about And obviously the evidence is Yehovah. still standing there as Absolutely. the witness. Mm -hmm. So here we are from the top, a, a shot that kind of, we can. I kind of noted where, where the golden calf altar is. Uh, the back of the cleft, uh, from from the top, seeing it from the top of the mountain, and obviously the the stone there is dark black, uh, and then everything else is is tan. Mm -hmm. So then from Moses' altar, I took this shot with my uh, telephoto, so you can see it clearly, just through the valley. There's a little bit of a valley there uh, where uh, that that cleft, that bunch of rocks are. Uh, and so when Moses was coming down with the tablets and Joshua is saying, hey, what's going on? They're having a part. What is it? Is it war or something? Because they could see that. They could yep. see something yeah. was going on there. They could there. see that coming down the mountain, yeah. And, and so then here we are at, at, the, at the level. Uh, we were able to get, we were given access the gate was open. You've seen where it's yeah. all locked up and everything. When the gate was open, we were in there. Here's a drone shot uh, as uh, Miles is discovering. So again, where you see how big these rocks are. They're compared huge. To the people. They're huge. And you have to wonder because, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think we have dimensions as to how big the golden calf was in the Bible. Not really. So how big was this calf? Mm. You know, like how big did they make this thing? Well, a lot the, of gold. Yeah. Maybe the size of a size of a calf. Maybe I don't know. Oh, it could yeah, be bigger. Uh, but they sure put a lot of uh, glyphs and carvings around it. But that's a good point because here we have cattle worship motifs, which are absolutely critical to proving that these Israelites came from Egypt. And from, this is one of them right here. This Do is, you want to talk about that? Well, this right. is the app from the Apis Bull Dance, and there are depictions like this in only four places in the world. Okay, you've probably seen the wonderful friezes at Crete where it's got the acrobat grabbing on to the horns of the bull and another one just leaped over onto his back. It's exactly what you see here. You see the bull's horns. So this is you like You see a, an acrobat grabbing on here and another one just landed on the back. So this is sort of a- Don't uh, try this at home, folks. <laughs> a rodeo bullfighting kind of thing that was ancient, apparently. It is ancient. And uh, I, I, this is found only in Crete Mycenae on that mainland of Greece. In Mount Sinai, this, this depiction is definitely the bull dance, no doubt about that. And the other place that's found is in Goshen. So these people oh, came really? from Goshen. And this bull dance ritual spread all over the, the Mediterranean. It became the bull fight, which was imported to the New World, where we kind of absorbed it into our culture as the bull ride. Mm. which you see in the rodeos. That's, that's a direct descendant so of Crete, the Apis Greek, bull dance. Spain, where we find the bull dance kind of, a, or the yes. bull fighting the originating. Bull fighting, and, which was a descendant of the, wow. the Apis bull ritual, the bull dance. Isn't that amazing? Uh, yes. So it was kind of cool because everybody else is going around shooting all the different pictures uh, of, the, of the other artifacts. And I'll show you some of them here that are on, on the altar. Uh, and... Uh, but Miles just did a quick circle around the place and said, uh-oh, there it is. We're going up there because that's the evidence. Yeah. That is the, the absolute evidence mm -hmm. that these people came from Goshen, that this is the place. See, yeah. that's, I mean, that's really important. That's what you look mm. at. Uh, look at the iconic art that's there. Where do you find that in the world? Yeah. You know, go to the... So this is all Egyptian stuff in Midian. What is Egyptian stuff doing? Go to the horse one. So the next one that we go to, uh, well, here's, 
we finally had a rest time and you see how big that is. This was an archeological survey and most of, most of these people were from our team, uh, Benamina Institute. And they were, we, were, we were there to find the new, new evidence or what, whatever is there to record it so it won't be lost. And so we were going through all the rocks and we found a number of new inscriptions. So we we're taking a break there. So this right here, this picture shows the gray. So the, the road making had carved into one of the bluffs and rocks, okay? And so when it's carved into, that's gray. That's gray granite. But because it's all, that ancient, what do they call that? The uh, patina. Patina uh, surface. The weathering uh, on the outtones. Uh, it's all tan. But what's more interesting, and I didn't get a chance to get a still of this, just on that same bluff, is a, is, a, is a major inscription. Ooh. And we so were, it's close. I mean, just missed it. Yeah, we were we, concerned that we are still concerned about those inscriptions being damaged or destroyed. But at least they're aware of that now and are trying to prevent it. I wish they'd be more. And you said there was another inscription like eight way. feet from the road or something like this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the other, uh, in Rafadim, on the backside of this, where the split rock is. One of the big things we were looking for were more footprints. We had a, we had a handful of pictures, but say, you know, with that many people there, there must be more. And we found many more. Oh, wow. Many more. So like here's one that we did find. Uh, and this is between uh, the, uh, the Golden Calf Altar and Moses Altar, just to get there. Mm -hmm. And we walk and pass, what is this? And... Uh, as you can see. I'd never seen this before. Hmm. And all the documentation I had studied of it. But what this is, this is a representation of giants. You can see the uh, uh, the antelope there, the ones with the big curved horns in there, like a, a quarter of the size of these giant figures. But obviously done by the same author. You can tell by the, by the color of the patina, you know, because it immediately starts to weather another layer over it. So you can mm. tell if something new is added. So these are all done at the same time. So you wow. can see some perspective. The, the thing about this is that the, the, Israelites had, the Israelites had actually seen the Anakin. They'd seen the giants when they took their scouting trip into the promised land. So it's almost a given that they would have recorded that on the rocks. Mm. So you're probably looking at the only picture of the Anakim that are out there. All right, so this was probably the 10 who doubted who drew these. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. They didn't last very long. I said that, that's not true. There are, there are a depiction of them on, in Seti's tomb, for example, there are some, so. So they were known. They were known. Wow. Oh, they've been written about widely. In the, now, how in can the we know East. these are giants? Because they're like, yes, because there's the antelope. Are there the, other these are here? very, very small. No, there aren't other people. But, but we just see by the we size. We know how big antelopes are. Okay. And they're four times the size of the wow. antelopes. So. Yeah, because they made all the antelopes the same, the same size. Yeah. They were consistent yeah. to make yeah. sure. And, and the giants are the same size, which is mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, the next. They're bow-legged, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the next... It happens in Texas a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the, next, the next slide is uh, where... There's a, a larger monument rock also in the path. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one apparently has some more ancient stuff on there. But as you can see in the highlighted area is something that uh, Dr. Jones was very interested in uh, that seemed to make all the rest of it make sense. Uh, this is an icon you see throughout Egypt. It's Horus, the son of the sun god, being suckled by Hathor, the cow goddess who is the patron saint of miners and of this area. And that's definitely, that's not- it's a close up. That's not, that's it right there. That is the icon. You don't want to be crawling under a cow or a bull anyway, but this is a cow, no horns, right? So this is a depiction of Horus being suckled by Hathor, which you see all over Egypt. So these people that made these, they came from Egypt. Wow. Well, let's continue next time because there's a lot more to see here and we've run out of time, but we, we can't leave this hanging because there's a great story that I want you to tell next time, Patrick, of okay. the wedding yeah. and just the, the, the realization you had there, I'm going to say from Yehovah, as, as you're standing there watching Catherine and Dr. Miles get married. So, All right, so you join us next week because you don't want to miss that story. Great stuff here. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time on Shabbat Night Live. Until then, 
Shavua Tov, and Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.